If you've ever felt lost, alone, or lacking inspiration as a female real estate investor, then this book is for you. Welcome to the Mastering Real Estate Podcast. This podcast is for real estate investors and professionals looking to take their real estate game to the next level. Each week, I review the industry's leading real estate books and break down the main lessons that you can apply to your life and business. Then, every other week, I review my own personal lessons learned from flipping over 100 houses and being a full-time real estate investor since 2018. Stay tuned each week so that we can all become masters of real estate together. Welcome back to the Mastering Real Estate Podcast. This is episode 23, and today we are reviewing Ashley Wilson's book, The Only Woman in the Room. We all know that real estate investing is a male-dominated industry, although that is slowly changing. However, operating in a very male-dominated industry can be very challenging. So having an anthology of 20 women's stories of how they navigated and succeeded in this industry is very motivating, inspiring, and needed. I'm your host, Maura McGraw. I've been a full-time real estate investor since 2018. I've managed over 100 flips, founded and grew a real estate investment firm, and I live and work in the real estate industry every day. This podcast is made possible by Doradus Properties, or my real job. Doradus is a real estate investment firm in Alabama, and if you are a real estate professional located in or around Birmingham, Mobile, or Baldwin County, we would love to connect and work with you. Despite the crazy interest rates, we are always looking for properties to buy, and we always want to expand our network of business partners. Shoot me an email at mora at doradusproperties.com, or you can fill out any of the forms on our website, and we'll be sure to get back to you. Right now, we are actively looking for more properties to flip and add to our rental portfolios, so keep us in mind. Okay, back to the show. This week, we're talking about Ashley Wilson's book, The Only Woman in the Room, Knowledge and Inspiration from 20 Women Real Estate Investors. This book was great, and it's not just for women. These stories of resilience, fortitude, and grit would inspire anyone who has struggled to make it, which is most of us, at some point. Additionally, it's an amazing survey of the various opportunities available in real estate investing. A lot of people know about house flipping, rental properties, and apartment complexes, but there are actually so many other ways to invest in real estate, and reading these 20 stories is a great way to quickly learn about a lot of different avenues in real estate investing. Before we jump into the book, let's learn a little bit about the author. Ashley L. Wilson, also known as Badash Investor, is a dynamic figure in real estate with over a decade of experience in the industry. Based in Pennsylvania, she co-founded House It Look LLC, which specializes in high-end house flipping, as well as Bar Down Investments, which focuses on large multifamily properties nationwide. Additionally, she founded Conference Connect and Apartment Addicts, platforms for conference discovery and multifamily coaching, respectively. Wilson is a best-selling author, has been featured in Business Insider, and holds a master's in leadership development from Penn State University. Outside of work, she enjoys spending time with her family and riding horses. Her journey from the pharmaceutical industry to real estate prominence reflects her broad skill set, entrepreneurial spirit, and commitment to empowering others in the industry. Here is a summary of her book. The Only Woman in the Room is a compelling anthology featuring the stories of 20 remarkable female real estate investors who have achieved financial independence in an industry historically dominated by men. From residential to commercial ventures, the book offers a wealth of knowledge and inspiration for individuals at all stages of their real estate investing journey. Compiled by Ashley Wilson, this book aims to empower women to secure a financially strong future, particularly during uncertain or challenging times. It celebrates the diverse backgrounds and paths to success of these different women, providing a beacon of guidance and encouragement for female investors who may have felt lost or alone in their own endeavors. Additionally, it acknowledges the invaluable contributions of supportive men in the industry. Through these inspiring narratives, readers are reminded that gender should not be a barrier to success in real estate, and that with determination and perseverance, 
anyone can thrive in this traditionally male-dominated field. Here are some of the key concepts that this book covers. Number one, setbacks and challenges will help build you for your future. It's amazing to read the stories of some of these women. They come from some of the hardest situations from immigrants to abusive alcohol and drug addicted families, spousal abuse, you name it. These women have overcome incredible challenges to get where they are today. And although all of their challenges are unique and different, A common thread is that every single woman in this book has had to overcome some significant challenges to be successful. And I think that reading between the lines, the challenges that each of them faced help make them stronger and ultimately push them to become successful in real estate. The second key concept that is echoed by a few of the authors is to observe the masses and do the opposite. Real estate is attractive to women for a lot of reasons, but for most of us, at some point, we have to confront the conundrum of wanting to be present mothers to our children, but still be able to bring in income, build wealth for our families, and have professional fulfillment. And for many of us women, (laughs) There comes a point where all these things seem to collide and there's not an easy or straightforward path about how to navigate it. Real estate is one of those little known uncommon options that can provide a path to quote unquote having it all. Obviously, we're all told to grow up, get an education, get a good stable nine to five job and save for retirement. And while that does work for some people, what a lot of these women recommend is looking what, at what most people are doing and do the opposite and believe that you can build wealth and build a flexible life of freedom if you envision it and you go after it. And that's what most of these women have done. That's also what I've done. And just because this path is atypical and diverges from what most people do, that is not something that should deter you. In fact, that should encourage you. A lot of them say like doing something different than what everyone else is doing is a good thing and you should embrace it because if you're just gonna do what everyone else is doing, you're just gonna get the same results as everybody else. And a lot of people are stuck in a nine to five job, they don't necessarily have the life they want. So you don't want to follow the path that everybody else is taking. You need to forge your own path and real estate investing is a great way to do that. The third key concept is to build a team. What all these women acknowledge is that none of us have become successful or gotten to where we are by ourselves. Everyone has some sort of a team, some sort of a support system or a mentor that helps them along the way and ultimately get where they wanted to go. So whether it's finding the right business partner, the right spouse, the right mentors along the way, or the right employees and the right team in your company, it is important to have a team because you can't do it all if you really want to scale your business. A lot of women talk about in the book how at some point they did get most of this stuff started on their own or with a very small team. But at some point, maybe they became the bottleneck and they had to create systems and delegate roles within their business in order to scale. The importance of building a good team around you is a very common thread and a key concept that's echoed throughout the book. Number four is educate yourself. Most of the women in this book did not come from a real estate background. There are a few who grew up with parents either in construction or in investing, but for the most part, Most of them did not. Most of them had to figure it out themselves and educate themselves. And really in this day and age, there's no excuse not to educate yourself. There are so many books like this one and so many free educational resources, a myriad of paid educational resources. There is no lack of information. So that really cannot be a barrier. Once you decide that you're interested, you have a goal, educate yourself. It's easier than ever to do and use your knowledge to achieve that goal. The fifth key concept is to have and set a clear goal. Don't let the fact that your goals and the life that you want is gonna differ drastically from a lot of the people around you. 
envision the life that you want and set your clear goal in real estate of how you can use real estate to build the life of your dreams and go after it. And don't pay much mind to what other people say or what other people are doing because you can do it. And these are 20 proven stories of women who have done it, who set big goals and they did it despite the fact that very few people, especially women, actually pursue this particular path. So do it. Number six is to take action. This is probably the most important key concept, the most commonly echoed key concept throughout the book. Take everything else is great. It's great to get educated. It's great to be motivated and have goals. All that stuff is useless unless you take action. Real estate is not overly complicated. It's relatively simple, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It does take action. You have to get going. You have to get that first deal done. You're going to have to make mistakes. There are going to be challenges, but you just have to. What a lot of them say is like, you have to get your ass off the couch and get going and start getting stuff done. You must take action, not just once, not just one big action, you have to take action every single day and be persistent, resilient, and have grit. That is really the key to success, is taking action. And finally, the last key concept is to be yourself. I love this book because all these women are so unique, their stories are so different, but they were all themselves. They let their own personality shine through, their own goals and desires shine through, and they let that be part of their business and part of their investing journey. And as someone who has worked in a couple very male-dominated industries, I think that this is a great point. You're not gonna blend in. You are a, a very much a minority in this industry, so you're not gonna blend in, so you might as well stand out and let your personality shine. Take advantage of the fact that you're the only woman in the room. Wear the bright colors, have your bright personality, and let that shine through in every room that you're in and in your business. Embrace who you are. Don't try to suppress it or necessarily fit in with what everyone else is doing. Be yourself. There are a lot of great quotes in this book, but here are four that in particular I really liked. The first one is by Brittany Arneson, and she says, a lot of my life has occurred outside of my comfort zone. It's not always a fun place to be. Typically, I've had moments of regret and question if I should give up or back out. I ultimately stuck it out, and every single time I am so happy that I did. I just thought this quote was great because we've all been there, when you push yourself outside of your comfort zone, which is really going to happen a lot as you dive into real estate investing, you dive into a whole new industry, you're definitely going to be outside your comfort zone. But if you push through and persevere, usually you will succeed and you will be grateful that you stepped outside your comfort zone. The next quote that I really liked is by Patricia Redhawk. She says, every successful woman real estate investor I know has asked for help and most importantly, given it. It is a uniquely curious and giving community, this one of females helping females. I have been fortunate to have successful mentors climb the ladder with one hand while reaching the other back to take mine. I really loved this quote about how women are helping other women in real estate. Even Ashley Wilson writing this book has been a great way to help other women. And now there are even women-specific forums and groups and a whole network dedicated to helping more women get into real estate investing. That's definitely a passion of mine as well to try to help more people get into it or consider it as an alternative career path to provide a more free and flexible life. I really like this. I think that we know the struggle of trying to balance it all. And if there is an easier and better way to make that happen, I think that we are generally very willing to help each other, which is amazing. The next quote is by Andressa Gadelli, and it's about negotiation. She says, I negotiate regardless of the estimate. For me, it is as simple as brushing my teeth every day. I brush it regardless of if I ate or not. It's just part of the process. I have found that the more I negotiate, the more comfortable I feel with negotiating. I was not comfortable with negotiating when I started, 
but here is how I built my skill and confidence. I love this because it really resonates with me. I'm not the most comfortable negotiating even to this day, but it's so important, especially when you're negotiating labor and material prices, you have to negotiate and you just have to make that part of your process. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you will get with it. And you might be surprised at how successful you can be, especially over time. I just thought her note about practicing negotiating and incorporating that into your flip and renovation process was really good advice. And finally, the last quote is by Kathy Fetke, and she says, the most difficult times in life are often the moments that force us to get off our butts and create miracles. And this quote I really liked because it's so true, and it was echoed and reflected in most of the stories in this book that all these women have faced really difficult and challenging times, but They faced the challenge, they got through it, and they have created amazing lives and miracles, which is an inspiration for all of us. Overall, here's what I loved about this book. It was motivational, inspirational. It was a great way to learn about a lot of different real estate strategies, and it was an easy and quick read. What did I dislike about this book? Like I said, I really did like it, and I struggled to find a critique, but ultimately I I have a small one, which is personally, I would have loved to hear a little bit more from women in commercial real estate besides multifamily. We did learn about self-storage and adult family homes in this book, which were both very interesting, but I would have loved to learn a little bit more from other women in other types of commercial real estate, like office, retail, hotels, land development, et cetera, maybe some more of the uncommon things that you don't hear about. Hopefully the fact that those aren't covered in here wasn't a reflection on the fact that there are so few women in these. I think by now there are more women in this type of commercial real estate. So maybe that means we just have to have a part two of this book and learn about all the other different types of commercial real estate. I would personally love that. Here are three lessons that we can all take away from this book and apply to our life and businesses. Number one is have a goal. Really all progress starts with having a clear goal in mind. My recommendation is if you want to change your life, if you want to have a more free flexible life, if you want to earn more money, build generational wealth, whatever it is that's important to you, write that down, have a clear goal, probably reflect on it regularly, and then design a plan for how real estate investing can help you get there. But it all starts with having a goal in mind because if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Number two, once you have your goal in mind, then one of the next steps is that you need to start getting educated about how to use real estate to achieve your goal. And ultimately, you'll probably have to pick an area of focus, a particular asset class or whatever it may be. And you'll want to dive into books, podcasts, paid and unpaid education. There's so much stuff out there. There's zero excuse to not be at least decently educated in your chosen field within real estate investing. So Set your goal and then start educating yourself so that you can be more equipped and well-informed to, number three, start taking action. As I talked about earlier, this is the most important step. Having a goal is great. Educating yourself is also great, but those things are useless unless you actually take action. And this is consistent action, not just one big push, but you need to have regular consistent action to ultimately get to where you want to go. Don't let anything, your gender or circumstances hold you back from reading this book. You can tell that people have overcome some of life's most difficult challenges to succeed in real estate investing. So if they can do it, then all of us can do it as well. It just takes taking consistent action and having that perseverance and fortitude to keep going even when times get tough. Okay, who should read this book? I think that all aspiring real estate investors would greatly benefit from reading this book. And besides the fact that it's motivational and inspirational, which is 
really important at the beginning of your journey. It's a great broad survey of the different real estate investment options available to you. Just by reading this book, you're going to hear 20 different real estate strategies, how 20 different people approached real estate investing to achieve their different goals. So likely, it's very likely that you'll identify with at least one of the stories in here, and it'll help you choose a direction in real estate investing. And I also think that all female real estate investors should read this book simply because there are challenges, unique challenges to being a woman in real estate investing and hearing how other women have navigated those challenges, overcome them and been successful is very helpful, very encouraging and very motivational. And who doesn't need a little motivation? Overall, I rated this book a seven out of 10. It was very good. It gives tons of great advice. It was easy to read, inspirational, motivational. The stories were all entertaining in different ways. Some stories made you want to cry. Some made you want to laugh. Some left you in awe. So it was very cool. And I think that because there are so many different types of stories, the odds are that you would relate to several of them. Maybe not all, but several of them. The reason I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 is because I would, like I mentioned, I would have loved to hear a little bit more about different aspects of commercial real estate investing, but that's probably a good opportunity for a part two of this book. Now let's give a quick minute to thank our show sponsor, Doradus Academy. If you are motivated by this book and ready to take action after hearing about or reading all the stories from this book, but maybe you're not sure exactly how or where to get started, I would love to help you. After figuring out a few things in real estate myself, I went back and created a roadmap of what I would do if I had to start all over again. That is what my masterclass is based on. If I had to go back to square one, do it all again, this is exactly how I would get started in real estate investing in order to save myself a lot of pain, a lot of money and scale a lot faster. I would love to help you get started in real estate investing and avoid a lot of the challenges that I face and that many women have faced in the industry. Go check it out at doradusacademy.com. I also have a ton of other great free resources that you can take advantage of there. This concludes today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. Come back next week to learn about how we purchased a 21 unit portfolio with seller financing. This was an awesome deal that we still own today, and I cannot wait to tell you about it. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast and leave us a rating and review. We are a new and growing podcast, so every rating, review, and share helps immensely. Also, make sure that you're following us on YouTube and social media. You'll get a lot more behind the scenes and content there daily. See you in the next one.